the 250cc segment in India has been lacking. Lacking a clear purpose, lacking a variety of options, lacking excitement and maybe even lacking a champion. One that could get people from either side to come in and take a closer look. Yamaha's FZ25 though had the right formula, solid pricing and solid usability. But exciting is the last word we used to describe that motorcycle. Now though, Suzuki's Jixxer 250 has just rolled in and it promises more. But how much more? And is the extra cost justified? Both engines might be identical in terms of cubic capacity, but the Suzuki's oil-cooled 4-valve motor makes 5.6 PS and 2.6 Nm more than the Yamaha's air-cooled 2-valve engine. That said, the Jixxer is 4 kilos heavier. Now both these bikes aren't designed as outright highway tourers, but they pack more than enough oomph to maintain some decent highway speeds. Both the bikes at 100 kph in their respective top gears, 6th for the Jixxer and 5th for the FZ are doing about 6,500 rpm. So they're pretty much on par at those speeds. At about 8,000 rpm in their respective top gears, they will hit 120 km per hour. Now up to 100, these bikes are sort of matched in terms of how relaxed the motors feel. But we start going beyond that and the FZ motor does start showing some signs of strain. Now because the Jixxer motor runs less stress at highway speeds, it actually delivers better fuel efficiency on the highway. So even though it has a smaller tank, just 12 litres, to the FZ's 14 litres, it can actually go a bit farther on a full tank of gas, almost 50 to 60 kilometres, well in theory of course. And the Jixxer's motor is a little bit more refined as well because the FZ's engine at higher revs does sound a bit strained. That said, when it comes to actual vibrations, you only start to feel vibes in the FZ's handlebar at about 8000 rpm and the same rpm on the Jixxer you will feel a mild buzz on the foot pegs. Now highway use is one thing, but most of us spend more of our time in the city than on long distance rides. So how do these two fare in the urban jungle? On paper and even in real life, the Jixxer's motor is definitely the punchier of the two. But at city speeds, you're not going to feel that difference all that much. Both bikes are very tractable, so you can carry fairly low speeds in high gears. Of course, in these scenarios, the Jixxer will eventually pull away from the FZ, but not by a big margin. Now the other important aspect to consider for everyday usability are of course the ergonomics and in that regard I think I already have a winner and that is the FZ. Well firstly the seat height at 795mm is low enough for most riders and you can get your feet on the ground fairly easily and even the foot pegs they are rear set but not aggressively so. The overall low body posture on this bike is very nice. Now the handlebars, they are set a little bit on the lower side, so you do have to reach out a little bit towards them. Now, for my height, I find this posture very comfortable and the bars are nice and wide as well. But the most important aspect here is the seat itself. It's quite plush, it's quite wide, but most importantly, it's flat and that makes the FZ overall very comfortable for riding on a daily basis. Now the Jixxer seat height is just 5mm taller than that on the FZ but for some reason it feels like you're sitting much taller. Now in terms of reach it's not a problem but you do feel like you're sitting on the bike rather than in the bike like you do on the FZ. But when it comes to the foot pegs they are quite similar to the FZs. They are rear set but they don't feel outright sporty in that sense. My first concern with the Jixxer's ergonomics, and admittedly this is a small concern, are the handlebars. Now they are nice and wide and they are set low enough. The issue here is that they feel a little too close to the rider. So for my height when I'm riding, I do feel a strain on my upper back uh, after a little while. But I have been told short riders might actually prefer this posture of the handlebars over the FZs. But the biggest concern here of course is the seat itself. Now it does look quite large, but it's got a very strange taper at the front so it doesn't feel all that supportive and also it's got this kick up at the back so you feel like you're sitting on a slope and it's constantly pushing you into the tank so is it the same story for the pillion as well on these bikes 
well sort of now the jigsaw's rear seat is set up higher than the fz's so climbing on it is a little bit more difficult plus the seat feels a little smaller and harder as well on the other hand the fz's rear seat is an easy reach for even shorter riders and it is definitely the more plush seat of the two and on top of that the fz's wider grab handles make it easy to hold on as well One aspect of these motorcycles that will affect people's everyday usability is ride quality. And starting with the Jixxer, now this bike is pretty stiffly sprung. Now it's not harsh by any means, so if you encounter a series of bumps, the ride stays fairly well controlled. But if you go over a sharp bump, you are going to get a pretty big jolt right up your backside. When it comes to suspension setup, Yamaha always nails those absolutely right. They've been doing that from the original FZ and there's no difference on this 25 as well. The ride is extremely plush and it handles bad roads and bumps like they almost don't exist. Now couple that with the more comfortable seat and the FZ was definitely a lot better on our rain destroyed roads in Pune and it's easy to see why you'll be more happy on this bike whether you're in the city or maybe even on the highway. Now I'll be honest, both these bikes aren't really loaded with some high-end features and are very similar on that end. Uh, both of them get LED headlights, but the FZs, well, that is pretty useless. The Jixxers is better than the FZs and even better than the SF250s, but I wouldn't call it a great headlight. It's a bit lacking in terms of reach and intensity. Now both these bikes get fully digital LCD instrument clusters and the Jixxers is definitely better laid out and easier to read. The Yamaha's console definitely looks dated. In fact, it looked dated even when the bike was launched over two and a half years back. And it's also missing a gear position indicator. The Jixxer here is definitely the punchier bike of the two. And if you were to ask me, I would say that is a little more fun as well. But what about everyday usability? I think in that sense, the FZ does a better job. And even at city speeds, it feels just as punchy. It's more comfortable as well. And the ride quality is definitely better. Well, what if you want to ride on the highway all the time? So unless you want to ride at really high speeds, I think the FZ feels almost as good as the Jixxer. And then you factor in that massive price difference. It's a whole 26,000 rupees cheaper than the Jixxer. So I think I would have to say that as an everyday 250, the FZ is still the boss. Abey, there. Abey, uncle. Dude, I'm younger than you, man. That may be the case, but looking at the bikes and the kind of decisions you're taking, it doesn't seem so. This is Zig Wheels. This is for the enthusiasts. And if you're thinking about the enthusiasts, how could you forget the KTM 250 Duke? That's because it's 63,000 rupees more expensive than the FZ. But the Jixxer 250 is 37,000 rupees cheaper than the Duke. Is it that much of a lesser motorcycle? That's what we have to find out. When it comes to performance, the boss is the Yamaha FZ. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's the 250 Duke. It's got the hardware for it, it's liquid cooled, four valve head, and it revs, and it's got 30 horsepower, which is more than the others over here. So it's no surprise that in the 0 to 100 run, it is faster than the Jixxer by about 1.2, 1.3 seconds, and the FZ lags further behind by another half a second. And this is all the more admirable considering that this is the heaviest motorcycle here. But there's one aspect which is very important in the real world and also when you're charging around corners, and that's grunt. And when you talk about grunt, it's the simpler motorcycles here that have the advantage. When it comes to roll-ons, it's the Suzuki that's the boss. In third gear, it is neck and neck with the KTM. But in fourth gear, this shows the other two a clean set of heels. And you can feel that determination from this engine when you attack a corner, you roll on the gas and it goes exactly how you want 
with real strength about it. And when it comes to revving it up, it can do that as well. So it might not rev as fast and quick as the KTM, which really loves to be revved. But to get the best out of the KTM, you would need a more experienced hand to build that momentum and carry it through corners. Whereas the Jigsa, its combination of grunt and revability would make even a younger, greener rider get on, find a nice pace you would enjoy without putting in too much of an effort. Honestly, I'd love to see this and the 250 Duke out on a track with a stopwatch in hand and thrash them out to see where they land up. Don't tell PD I said this, but I think he's got a point about this FZ's engine. It's 10 PS down on the KDM, but it still feels so usable. Even when you're going around corners, it's got the grunt to drive out of it. You can carry a fair amount of pace. But the thing is, it doesn't enjoy being thrashed and you don't enjoy thrashing it. Because once you get past that, you know, nice hefty mid-range, it doesn't enjoy being revved. It starts feeling rough and gruff and basically, yeah, just take it easy. Now the FZ, it doesn't like being hustled either. When you show it a set of corners, it'll track the line that you want, but it isn't a motorcycle that inspires confidence. It isn't a motorcycle that feels agile. And just like the engine, the chassis of the FZ also is a bit reluctant when you hustle it. Sure, it can follow the line that you want, but it's always kind of whispering in your ear that it isn't enjoying it. It's down to the tires, which don't have as much grip as the others, aren't the same kind of spec either. And when you look at the chassis, the wheelbase is really long. It'll do what you want it to, but it won't inspire confidence in you. But there is something that the FZ does really well, and that's stopping. It's got great bite from the brakes, and feel, well, is the best of the three here. So it provides the best stopping distances. And one motorcycle that misses out on this front is the Suzuki Jigsa. The brakes on the Jigsa just feel spongy, inconsistent. Okay, let's put the brakes aside and look at the Jigsa. And what we'll find is a package that will be quite attractive for newer or younger riders looking to hone their skills or sharpen their skills. That's because when you go into a corner, the Jigsa inspires a lot of confidence. And that is surprising because it has the shortest wheelbase here. But the tires are radials and wider than the ones on the FZ and in fact the same ones that you get on the KDM Duke. Now this of course adds to the sense of confidence and while attacking corners will give you a greater sense of confidence. Of course with the shorter wheelbase you do have a bit more agility but you also have to be that much smoother. But if you're looking for a motorcycle that offers great amount of adjustability and a greater amount of sharpness, the one that you'd be looking at would be the orange one. Like a new generation Duke, this 250 is almost telepathic. It will attack a corner when you want, how you want, and then allow you some more adjustability along the way or in the corner even. The only caveat is you as the rider are going to have to work a little bit harder think things through to combine that rev happy performance of the engine along with the sharp chassis to deliver that perfect line through the corner. We're really looking forward to seeing this on a track with the KDM. But if you're thinking of lap times, the Jigsa will have to overcome one hurdle and that is its side stand, which tends to scrape quite easily. But is that it? No bad side? Well, there is one disappointment and that is in terms of personality, the sense of connection while riding it, the 250 Duke doesn't quite create the experience that we've gotten used to with KTMs. In fact, the 200 or the 390 feel more exciting to ride. But character, that's certainly been missing in this segment. And even though the Jigsa is offering more in terms of ability, it's still not a character-rich motorcycle. So the 250 Duke, we're not going to hold this against it. So I'm still going to stand by what I said earlier. For commuters, the FZ is still the best option. What it lacks in terms of excitement, it more than makes up for in terms of nailing the daily grind to an absolute T. But if you are an enthusiast, we see you graduating more towards the KTM and it's easy to see why. It's got that KTM DNA which we all love and shockingly, it's a lot easier to live with than a 390 or even the 200. Of course, to get the most out of it, you do require an expert's hand. And of course, you have to be prepared to shell out a lot more money for it. So at least amongst this lot, when it comes to striking the balance between everyday usability and fun riding, well, the Jigsaw does do 
a pretty good job. Even in terms of pricing, it sits smack dab in the middle of the other two. If only it had the personality of the Jix 750, then it would be a no-brainer. We recommend this to everybody. But as things stand, if you want a 250 which has a little bit extra, the Jixxer 250 would definitely be the choice for you.